today we're going to talk about how to pack for a retreat. I'm excited. I've been wanting to do this episode since back when I was podcasting, but doing a podcast about packing doesn't really make much sense, but there's no comprehensive list about how to pack for like Steubenville. So this is Connor's guide to packing for Steubenville. Woo oh, I'm okay. So the main thing you need to know is what's called the two bag method. The two bag method consists of bringing two bags. But that's why it's called the two bag method. The first bag is the bag that I like to call the big bag. The big bag is some sort of a duffel bag that you can put a lot out. I hit myself in the head. A bag you can fit lots of stuff in. This is gonna be the bag that you're not gonna be able to touch while you're traveling. Think about this as the bag that either fits under the airport, under the bus, or in the trunk of the car. The second bag is the bag you're going to fill with stuff that you need immediate access to while traveling. Some people call these drawstring bags. I don't care. I call them retreat bags because they're bags that you use on retreat. They can hold all your stuff. They're easy to fit underneath a seat and they're just really cool. Retreat bags. Get your retreat bag today. Three easy orders for $9.95. So enough of that. What exactly are we actually going to be putting in these two bags? Well, like I said, this first bag, the big duffel bag, is going to be where you put all the stuff you don't need. This is going to be your clothes, your um, toothbrush, toothpaste, your hair shampoo, your body wash, because you don't want to be that guy. Um, everything you need that you don't need when you're there. A blanket could go in here. Could be a good good thing to do. A pillow does not go in here. We'll talk about that in a minute. So that's pretty much it for the stowaway and never bring out bag. So what do you put in your retreat bag? You start off with the basics. You got a phone. You need a phone. Don't be playing with your phone on retreat, fam. Do not be Instagramming everything on retreat. Instagram a little bit. Not everything. Don't need to update your snap story every single time a new speaker comes on. And of course you need a wallet filled with sweet, sweet moolah. That way you can actually buy cool retreat shirts because some places don't give them to you for free and that's a sad day, but then you can still get one. Along with phone and wallet, you probably need an external phone charger. Why do you need this? Well, your phone going to die when you are out there all the time, Instagram and Snapchat and all those darn pictures of Jesus and your love for him with hashtag I love Jesus and hashtag blessed. When you doing that, your phone going to die fast. So you need some sort of an external battery charger. You can pick them up at Walmart, Amazon, Target, wherever anything that works. Plug them into the wall, charge them, and you have a lot more battery for your phone. A friend of mine would actually bring about two or three of these little buddies, and when they were on the bus ride home and people's phones started dying, he would rent them out for like $5 for a half hour or something ridiculous for them to be able to charge their phones so that they could just like listen to the music and call their parents and all that stuff. Good sneaky way to make some money on retreat. Wouldn't recommend it all the way, but I would recommend you bring your own phone charger. Just don't forget to charge the phone charger before you leave because then that's an unfortunate event. Bring snacks. People like you when you bring snacks and they taste really good and then you have your sugar high. And mix a sugar high with the Jesus high and you're gonna sleep well. Now for the sake of clarity, let's say you're going on a Steubenville retreat where Friday you spend most of the day driving, then there's some sort of event Friday to kick off the weekend. Then Saturday is filled with speakers, confession, mass, adoration, crying. Um, Sunday, mass, more speakers, guys and girls sessions, and then you leave around like 12 or one. For clothes for that sort of an event, I would say bring about three shirts, one for Saturday and one for Sunday and one just in case or to change into. Three pairs of shorts, athletic or otherwise. Don't be that guy wearing pants all the time with shoes and totally recommend sweatpants. Mostly just because they're really comfy, they work well when you're on a bus and you wanna take a nap when you're coming back because you're tired. And they would work really well if it's cold and you want some pajamas, but there you go. Also, I would totally recommend bringing some sort of a hoodie or jacket. These are really comfortable for the ride back. And here's a hack. If it's not that cold, you can use this to kneel on. Whoa, a kneeling pad, Whoa! And that leads me to one of the most important hacks I ever have ever had, shoes. Don't bring shoes. No, I'm not saying don't bring shoes at all. I'm saying don't bring shoes with socks. Bring lip flops. Call them Jesus shoes, call them Jesus sandals, whatever you want. These are the greatest thing ever because they're comfortable. You want to play some ultimate frisbee, just take them off and play. You want to take them off because it's hot and you don't want to wear socks? Well, you don't need to wear some socks. You just got flip flops. Or let's say it's really hard on the floor where you're kneeling for adoration for three hours. Well, these are pretty comfortable kneeling pads. I have done that. I've taken these off and knelt on them. I don't regret my decision at all. They're really comfortable and three hours adoration. Your knees are gonna be thanking you later in life, lad. Bring your flip flops. 
Some people say bring a frisbee. If that is your game, then fine. Bring a frisbee. It's always fun to throw around a frisbee. Frisbees are cool. Bring a frisbee. But you can put that in the other bag. Because if you're throwing a frisbee on the bus, everyone will hate you. Don't be that guy. Also along the lines of trying not to be annoying, don't bring a harmonica or a quarter. Just don't do it. Don't be that guy. I was that guy. Looking back, I was probably annoying. Don't be that guy. If you're going to bring an instrument, bring a guitar. Because then you can strum your Jesus tunes and your how he loves and your Lord I need you and your good good father and nobody will think you're annoying because you're a Jesus musician. Jesus musicians don't use recorders. This public service announcement brought to you by Rise of Jerusalem. Headphones, these are of the utmost importance because, well, when you're done for the week and you just want to sleep, put these in and listen to your good good father and your how he loves and your Lord I need you. And then you can drift right off to sleep in the bus or the airplane or the car and nobody will judge you because they're all doing the same thing. Do not forget your headphones. Trust me, one year I said, yeah, I don't need my headphones. Biggest mistake of my life. Now you are going on a retreat, so bring your handy Bible. It's always good to look up different Bible quotes. Bibles are very important. Bring your Bible. Do not forget your Bible. You might also want to bring some light spiritual reading like C.S. Lewis's Screwtape Letters or Thomas A. Kempis's The Imitation of Christ. Very good works. Good to remember, like, oh yeah, I'm going to start this book and then I'm going to finish it when I'm at home, and then I can keep up my retreat high and keep going. And I'd recommend both these books. Now here's what you don't do. Don't be that guy who's sitting there in adoration and pulls out orthodoxy or pulls out city of God. That's a book stopper. Don't be that guy. Bring light spiritual reading. Something you can get into in the moment and something you can just chill with and then read later. Light spiritual reading, not craziness. And down to the last two most important things to bring on a retreat. The first one is a journal. You're gonna wanna bring a journal. Bring this in your, where is it? I'm putting it in there right now. This goes straight in. That is the first thing you pack, besides your Bible and your rosary, because of course you need your rosary. Don't forget a rosary, just don't forget your rosary. And then you can be that cool guy who like puts the rosary around his wrist and wears like that all weekend and everybody's like, dude, that guy has a rosary on, he's super Catholic, man, he's so cool. Chicks dig guys with rosaries on their arms. But a journal, journal is incredibly important. I love this journal, I've had this journal for a couple of years now and whenever I go into adoration, I write in it, goodness, it's almost full, I'm gonna have to get a new one. You are gonna wanna write down what speakers are saying and you're gonna wanna write down in adoration stuff that comes to your heart and you're gonna wanna write down stuff when you're driving home about how the retreat was and what you learned and how God touched you. Journals are the most important thing. Bring your journal, bring it. You don't have one, go to Walmart and get one right now. Stop watching the video and go. Now, go, go get a journal. Cool, and while you're at Walmart getting a journal, do not forget pens and pencils. Can I tell you how many times I've forgotten a pen or a pencil? It's very embarrassing because then you're just like, yo, I should be fine writing my journal, but I forgot a pen or a pencil. Oh no, what am I going to do? And then you have to ask somebody for one and then they only have one so they can't give you theirs because they were writing their journal because they were smart and they brought their journal and they brought their pen and pencil. Now the last and most important thing to bring in your day back on retreat is some tissues and some more tissues and some more tissues because you know at Saturday night, when Jesus is touching you, you and your neighbor is going to need some tissues. Also, guys, pro picking up a girl at a retreat tip, giving her some tissues while she's crying in adoration, totally, totally a good way to pick her up without even needing to use a pickup line. That's when you know you got game. Just kidding. Don't give that strange girl whose number you want some tissues. That's not the way you want to tell your kids you first met. Yeah, dude, I gave her some tissues when she was crying in adoration. It was like super inspired. I wasn't even crying or anything. I was just focus on her crying, like, how I could get her number. So I gave her some tissues. That was pretty, that was pretty dope. I got game. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna take your Bible, your rosary, your tissues, your headphones, your phone charger, your pen, your light spiritual reading, your journal, your phone, and your wallet, and put them all in your retreat bag. Zip that up, and you are good to go for your retreat. One thing I forgot, do not put your pillow away. You gonna wanna want it because buses do not have soft edges. They're very hard. So you can put this up against the window or against your neighbor with your headphones in after writing in your journal. You just think, oh, wow, that was a great retreat.
Anyways, guys, if you didn't catch all of that, there is a comprehensive list of everything I just said in the description below as all of the stuff you should bring and what goes in the day bag and what goes in the other bag. If you know somebody who's going on a retreat like Steubenville, share this with them because these are all facts you need to know. Phone chargers, important. Rosaries, important. Yada, yada, yada. I, you know what I just said? I just did it all. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Rise up and lift.